Now, the fourth and most insane moment at the United Methodist Conference. Buckle up. These people are not. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. With a final flourish, United Methodist Conference eliminates all anti-LGB policies. Now, in this video, I want to go over and I want to share the details of what this means and what they actually did here. And then you're going to want to stick around because I'm going to show you the four wokest, insane moments of this conference. You don't want to miss this. You know, I've done lots of videos on my channel about the United Methodist Church. In fact, I just, my most recent one was a couple months ago and I showed how, well, they were going to do this. They were going to allow LGB into everything. And I said in that video, if you go to a United Methodist Church, find a different church, a biblical church. Listen to this. After repealing a 52-year-old declaration on Thursday that the practice of LGB is incompatible with Christian teaching, delegates on Friday went further, eliminating a passage in their book of discipline or church law that states ceremonies that celebrate LGB unions shall not be conducted by our ministers and shall not be conducted in our churches. That's gone. That's all gone. A biblical stance on marriage is completely gone from the United Methodist Church. So you cannot make the argument that this is a fringe thing within the United Methodist Church. It's not. The UMC is corrupt. They are apostate and they are proving that every single day. And I've been saying this for years that this is going to happen. The UMC has been telling you this is going to happen. They also eliminated provisions that would have charged clergy with immorality if they were not faithful in a hetero marriage or celibate in singleness. Instead, delegates supported adding a requirement of integrity in all personal relationships. So the UMC denies marriage how God created marriage. And it's funny because immediately after this, after the vote to repeal LGB bans, many of the LGB Methodists are now fully out. <laughs> so it literally just opened the floodgates to bring LGB into everything. I, I, I promise you, the UMC, all they care about is pushing these satanic agendas pushing this indoctrination. In fact, if you just do a quick search on the Christian Post, this is just one of the news outlets you can search this on, but dozens and dozens of stories of churches leaving the UMC or trying to leave the UMC, which is a good thing. There are good people that were within the UMC that have been trying to leave the UMC for years, which they should be doing. And you should be doing too if you go to a UMC church. I can't stress that enough. It even got to the point where, look, Georgia was blocking churches from being able to disaffiliate from the UMC because there was so many leaving. Now I want to start here and show you the four most insanely woke moments of the United Methodist Conference that just happened a couple of weeks ago. You're going to want to see these video clips and trust me, this one here, well, number three and four are going to blow your mind. That's why I'm saving them for last. Here we go. Woke moment number one at the UMC conference. Uh, there is a new something that I'm observing at this annual conference, um, this, uh, general conference, and that is clergy delegates introducing themselves and saying their pronouns. <laughs> May I know what the meaning of this new introduction and the rationale? All right, so real quick, what he just asked was that he noticed something new at this annual conference. That, well, clergy, pastors, leaders are getting up and every single one of them are announcing their pronouns along with their name and their status. <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, one of our <laughs> folks from monitoring to come and share oh. uh, because they have asked us to give specific information about ourselves as we come forward. And of course, 
people Give me a have break. the choice as to how they identify themselves. But monitoring team will uh, either judge. Look at her. She's looking around. All uh, well, um, I people can identify. Identify the with the um, the way that they uh, I in the thing with the things you gen do you genuinely believe that this is a Christian church? This is just the first woke moment. Wait until you see the next three Genesis chapter one, the very first book in the very first chapter. This is what God had to say. God created man in His own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Woke moment number two. Listen to this hymn that they that they were singing at the UMC conference. It's uh, quite incredible. I don't know how much I can play. I don't know if this is copyrighted or not. Hey, they don't sound half bad. Listen to this. The song of peace is sung by all. Strength grows from unity and harmony. We celebrate your gift. Diversity. Now this is a hymn called Creator of the Intertwined written by Jacques B. Jones. This is a song that was written to sing that all faiths lead to God. This is a universal hymn. And here they are, of course, singing it at the United Methodist Church. It's absolutely disgusting. Their mockery of worship to God. Now, worship isn't only song, but we use song to worship God. And right here, they're using it to mock God. Also, Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here's the third woke moment of the UMC conference. Check this out. This is an LGB pastorist. Pastorist. And I want you to hear what she has to say about the word kingdom in the Bible. Throughout Matthew's gospel, Jesus emphasizes to his followers the difference between earthly kingdoms and God's kingdom. I love a recent post by the United Women in Faith. That explains so well why some of us in English, and I apologize if this doesn't translate well, in English, some of us use kingdom instead of kingdom. Kingdom without the G is one more translation of the Greek word basileia that has been translated in a number of ways like kingdom or reign or dominion. The Latin, Latina theologian Ada Maria Sassidias proposed using kingdom to reflect the kind of interconnectedness and relationship Jesus invites us into through his teachings. Disgusting. God desires us to live in companionship and community, into love and liberation. Look at this picture. Apparently the kingdom of God is all women. First of all, her explanation of Basileia is, well, false. It's wrong. All this is, is these insane leftists trying to take words in scripture and twist them to mean something that benefits them and benefits their ideology that leads to hell. Basileia is never, not one time, ever translated in the Bible as kingdom. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's a word they don't like right there, repent. Now, the fourth and most insane moment at the United Methodist Conference. Buckle up. Today's and tomorrow's daily Christian advocate, G. Cor and G. Cosro, will be sharing examples of celebrations and concerns that our monitors observed through their equity and gender lenses. <laughs> Today's report of gender and race. Friends, yesterday was the first time that you, as the body of Christ in this holy conferencing setting, had an opportunity, Disgusting. an opportunity to practice inclusion in decision making and to model it to the rest of the church and to the world. That opportunity was in the election of the officers of your legislative committees. So how well did you do? All right. She just asked, how well did you do? They're about to put a chart up on the screen that's going to blow your mind. But what they're essentially doing here is saying, we tested you yesterday during the conference and we saw if you're really inclusive or not. This is demonic. This is sick and disgusting and perverted. These people are insane. This feels like the Hunger Games, really. Well, here it is. 
combining the chairs, vice chairs, secretaries, and subcommittee chairs across the 14 legislative committees. Here is our report card. White female, 17. Okay, they basically read off all the numbers here. But this is who was... <laughs> but this is who was elected to leadership. So it was 17 white females, 11 white males. And then you're going to see here uh, white non-bi... Uh, multiracial female, four, multiracial male, one, Asian female, four, Asian male, three, black female, 10, black male, 14, Hispanic, Latino, two, two, one. So when you actually add everything up, what you have to understand here is that their whole point is that these numbers uh, down here below must be greater than the numbers on top. If you have a white male, then you are doing badly. You're icky. A white female, well, it's a female, so you're on the right track, but it's still white. Ew. So what they're looking for is for all these numbers to be greater than. And when you add all of them up, you'll see that there are more non-white males and more non-white females than there are white male and females. Well, th these numbers aren't good enough. Listen to what these insane pawns of Satan had to say about these numbers. Pretty amazing. But Gio, there were some hiccups yesterday. Yes. Yes, and we are choosing to show grace in our reporting today <laughs> and choosing to empower the elected leaders to set a tone of inclusion, hospitality, respect, and safety as the legislative work continues today. And hopefully with the opening jitters out of the way, we can settle down and honor every voice in the room, including those whom English is not their first language. That's just a friendly reminder. Actually, Gio, it's the second reminder. I'm just saying. These people are nuts. This is the United Methodist Church. If you try to say otherwise, I'm sorry. You're trying to cling on to something that doesn't exist anymore. The United Methodist Church is satanic. They are apostate. They will deceive you. They are deceiving you if you believe anything that they say is actual truth. But hey, let me know your thoughts about this insanity in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know, when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video.